great man does not pay the price. Then I will tell you a man who failed because of that. When you get to when you go past this level, you will meet more higher demons. People of Lockett, next level has to be you, you need to, 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 to desire it. But if you wake up every morning, you are still alive, you need to thank God. If you wake up, because I've got to Italy, I have arrived. Success is sure. I'll be, I'm successful. Text you don't know the voice of God. When God tells you, see this thing, Moses had the world. If God gives everybody his glory, we will play with the glory life. We don't know why we love the man. I love the man of Galilee. Oh, oh, oh. For he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins and sent the Holy Ghost. Great the world, oh, oh, oh. you are oh, oh, oh. mighty are your miracles, standing on us. Ha <laughs> ha 
Just wanted to appreciate God, the giver of life, the reason why we are here today, the strength of our lives, the one who has blessed us abundantly, the one who has counted worthy for you to be here today. Say, Lord, thank you. Say, Lord, thank you. Appreciate Him, somebody. Glorify this God. Glorify Him the best way you can. Appreciate Him. Hallelujah. I also want to appreciate our man of God who indeed is a blessing to us. The man who accepted the vision. If he had not accepted the vision, you and I will not be here today. It's the truth. Many people would have not had gotten, they would have not have gotten born again by this time now. If he had not accepted the vision. Amen. I wanted to appreciate him. Appreciate him. Apostle Kester Shaba, appreciate him. It's a blessing to this generation. Hallelujah. So I wanted to appreciate the men of God in the house, the pastors, the leaders, the deacon, the deaconess, the workers, everyone, everyone leader in this house, everyone worker in this house, appreciate them. Their effort, their effort, their effort. That's why you see what is happening here today. Appreciate them. We are not appreciating them. We can't clap for them. Clap. Put your Bible down. Clap. And most especially, I say it all the time. The altar is of no use if there are nobody to, that will come and save the altar. So if there is no congregation, this place is of no use, of no value. And me standing here today will be of no value. Amen. So I want you to appreciate yourself this morning with a clap offering. Because you are the most important person in this place. I want you to appreciate God for it. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself also in the heart. I'm also Lord, clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Amen. God is faithful. God is faithful. Say to the last person close to you, say you are blessed this morning. Say you are welcome to church. You will live here better than you came. Our word for the month is our season of covenants. Empowerment for what? Our season of covenant empowerment for what? Amen. The Bible said to us, and God said to Abraham, a new shall all the nations of the earth be what? Be what? Blessed. That covenant act already taken place on our behalf that we must be blessed. Amen. It is something that has been settled and God has covenanted himself to bless us. That your seed will be great. He told Abraham. And the Bible makes us to know today that they that are of faith are the seeds of Abraham. 
No wonder Jesus became poor so that you through his poverty will be rich. Hallelujah. That will be rich. It is already settled. And we understand through the scripture, Deuteronomy 8 verse 18, the Bible said to us, it is God that giveth you power to make, open it so that it will not be on the one framing up the scripture. Hallelujah. He said, for thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wet. To get wet. That he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers. Who is the fathers? Abraham. Are you getting it? So, this covenant is what we have entered into by faith. Hallelujah. But my focus this morning, people of God, is something I told us on Wednesday. I said there is difference between wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. God opened my eyes. I begin to understand that wealth is for everyone. But prosperity not for everyone. There is difference in prosperity. You will still find wealth. You will find riches. You will find health. You will find blessings. In prosperity, you will find peace. There is difference between prosperity and wealth. Wealth is for anyone who obeys the principles. Anyone who wake up to do work. Anyone who is not lazy. Wealth is for them. That is why you find unbelievers. When they give, God bless them. When the righteous give, God bless them. Hallelujah. So riches is for all any man. If the world today, you will find out that even the richest man is not a Christian. <laughs> the richest man is not a Christian. So what is for anyone who obey the principles? Even you can get it in a godly manner, you will still get wet. But you cannot get prosperity in a godly way. You cannot get prosperity as an unrighteous man. You know the problem we have as man is the way we define some things. When you say prosper, somebody has prospered. We think because he has been able to build houses. He has been able to acquire wealth for himself. He has millions in his account. He has not prospered. Hallelujah. He has not prospered. <laughs> but a child of God who is faithful, he may not be as rich as you, but he has prospered. There is difference between prosperity and wealth. I'm going to give us so many instances to in from the Bible so that we we'll understand. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to the Bible. As Christians, we are converted to prosper. As Christians, listen, you know, I'm not saying as man. As Christians, we are converted to what? Prosper. We don't match up wealth, but what? Prosperity. prosperity. We don't match up wealth, but we live in prosperity. Amen. I will give you the scriptures so that you understand that God didn't make mistake in those words. Some of us, we quote it all the time. We've never sat down and asked, what does it truly mean? Now, let's go to the word. Let's go to Job. Let's start from there. Job chapter 22. Job 22. Let's start from verse 21. Now, so we understand what we're talking about to 25. Job 22 from 21 to 25. Hallelujah. Are we there? He said, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come what? Unto thee. Acquaint now thyself unto him and be at peace. Thereby good Come unto you. Now, he said, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. I lay up his words in your heart. Listen very well. Continue. If thou return to the Almighty, thou 
thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from that tabernacles. Then shall thou lay up gold as what? As what? Dust. When will you lay up gold as dust? When you have returned to the Lord. You put away iniquity. You put his word, his law in your mouth. Then you will mount up gold as dust. And the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Hallelujah. Yea, the almighty shall be thy difference. His explaining prosperity to us. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to Joshua 1 verse 8. Everything is just so here. Let's explain it better. In Joshua 1 verse 8. Hallelujah. We know it very well. We quote it all the time. It's our closing scripture. Now, look at what it says. It said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Do you remember what it said just now in Job? In Job? But thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written there. Do you know there are people who can quote the scripture very well, but they don't live with the scripture. They know it. There are professors who have read the Bible 500 times, but they don't live with the word of God. Hallelujah. Now he said, know it. Not just knowing it, knowing it, that you will observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt do what? Make thy way prosperous. And have what? Good success. Prosperity and success are the same. There is no success for a man who has acquired just words. And I think it takes that to be successful. Success is not acquiring words. Did you see words here? He said, after you are you are you are prosperous, then you will have good success. Then you can say, I am successful. Because you are you've prospered in the way you ought to. Now the Bible made a scripture, gave us a scripture. He said, train up a child in the way he should go. It didn't say in the way he should grow. There is difference between growing and going in the pattern you have to go on. Hallelujah. Now, if that child should go on that way he ought to go, at the end of the day he will be labeled a success. But if that child does not go in the way he ought to go, maybe he became prosperous in, in, in the way of the, of, of, in the eyes of the world, what we call words and he has money, has this. People may say he is successful, but that is not true success. The Bible makes us understand that true success comes from the Lord. Amen. I'm going to, we must say this is Old Testament. Let's go to New Testament and see what God wishes us. He didn't wish us riches. He didn't wish us riches. He didn't wish us wealth. He wished us something. The book of Third John, one verse two, that we know very well. Look at what it says. Third John, one verse two. It says, "Beloved, beloved, I wish above all things in everything that you get wealth. No, no. That you get many houses. No, no. That you want you prosper." In good hands, even as your soul prospers, our soul prospers. It does not gather words. It does not gather riches. We prosper. We are far above riches. We dwell in it already. Riches is our be- our bread, but there is something far above words that we need to understand what this thing is, how it functions, and the reason why. The message of prosperity, of of uh, uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, well, I say yes, prosperity is being looked on as a wrong message. Is because we only embark on the path where it talks about words. Are you getting it? I want to try to explain it so that we not say it wrong. 
the reason why most people have looked at the message of prosperity as something you used to embezzle people is because we have focused only on the path of wealth, on the, of riches. We do not focus on this path of prosperity. Amen. Now, the path of riches talks about give and it shall be given. That is what this is the principle. It's a give. Did he say as a Christian? Did he say as an unbeliever? Give. Anyone who gave always get back. Are you getting it? This is the principle to get wet. Any man can match up wet. Anyone can get wet. Anyone can get money. As long as you do what is right, go get it. Whether ungodly or righteous. Wait. If you like, you keep a you go get money. If you not keep pressing, you walk, you go still get money. That is what it means. But if you keep pressing, you cannot prosper. You not keep pressing. You don't live in the will of God. You can still not prosper. You may come to church every day. You may give your office. You may give your tithe. If you disobey God in His word, you still cannot prosper. Amen. So there is difference between matching up words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the last days. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. As Christians, he said, "Now what is wet? Wet is an abundance of valuable possessions or money. Go to your Google. That is what you will still find. Are you getting it? Possessing valuable possessions or money. That is wet. That is wet." I get many money, I get many houses, I get many cars. That is what. Now, what is prosperity? What is prosperity? Whether biblical, whether Google, they know what prosperity is. And they explain it. Look at it. It said the state of being prosperous. A long period of peace. What did he say? He said, he has come that you will have life and have it what? Abundantly. A long period of peace and prosperity. Wealth, success, profitability, affluence, riches, good fortune, comfort, security, and many more. All these are under one thing called prosperity. Amen. The Bible says, "Blessed is the man who God gives yafu yafu money many, and he still give a mat to eat." Blessed is that man. That is what we call true prosperity. It's not worth. Many of us we have money, but when you look at us, we know they see the money. Hallelujah. Many people they do some things to sustain their riches. But a child of God, we only live in the will of God to continue to prosper. We only live in the will of God. The book of Psalm chapter 1. What did it say? Psalm chapter 1. Just look at what the Bible These are, these are, are what the, God has talked about words. Yes, we understand. But look at what it talks about prospering. There is much more scripture talking about prospering. He said, Blessed is the man. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doth he meditate day and night. Still going back to what Job will write, going back to what Joshua that we write, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth. Did he say we make money? We, make money. we prosper. prosper. This is our own. We are seeking for words. We are seeking for the wrong thing. The reason why we work to get money is because we have not come to understand how it actually works. You work is the best thing, but not just because of money. There are things I love. 
love some people who love them job, their job. The first thing to do is to love what you are doing. If you don't love it, you are working for money. And the day that money doesn't call you, you'll be frustrated. Do you know that? Many people who are working for money, if you love what you do, just take for example, those people singing, I, I want to use the Christian part. They should love it, not because of the money that are going to come. And the reason why many people have failed in their race is because of what they are expecting in return. In return. We're talking to Christians. So, when we're talking about prospering, your gift ought to make you prosper. But the way you manage your gifts will determine if you will prosper with it or not. Are you getting it? That is what we're talking about. We determine if you prosper with it or not. Some of us today will forget the path why the reason why we are actually called. And some of us are even forgotten that we are actually called. Today you will invite a man of God come and minister and bless souls. We ask you how much are you putting in my accounts? The first thing, the business of the day is the money. The money. Money has become the business of the day. That is why the Bible said the love of it is the root of all evil. Did it say the love of prosperity? The love of money, of what? The reason why people have sold themselves into prostitution is because of money. Because they want to gain weight. They want to build houses. They want to buy GAK. That is why they have entered into 419. Which they call Yahoo Yahoo. And now they have entered into Yahoo Plus. A boy or a girl who never thought he would go and visit native doctor. Because of money, he has gone there. In this kingdom, we don't need to visit them. And why one is plus, plus, plus? We are far above Yahoo Plus. We are far above it. We are not limited by anything. We just enter, we prosper. Amen. Amen. Now, do we want to walk in prosperity this month? Do you want to live a life of success? Do you want to celebrate? You will live a life without lack in this month. You must know where your focus is. Because what you focus on will determine your outcome. Jesus Christ don't matter. He said, why go about busy body about the things that are not needful? He said, but look at Mary. One thing is needful and she has chosen them. Good parts. One thing is needful. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing we follow. The same Bible says, what shall it profit you after you have marked up words? Did it say prosperity? No! No! Words cannot secure your future. It cannot secure your destiny. It cannot secure your life. I want to see men with money, many, many money, many houses, sickness, I kid them. They don't feel bad. They are, they are way out of it. The once, once, once richest man had what we call ulcer. In the, in the process of looking for money, he forgets that they eat. Richest in the world. In the process of looking for money, he forgets that they eat. He <laughs> not remember to eat well. Ulcer, kill him. Money. But prosperity, no. Prosperity, no. That is just one thing you need to do when it comes to prosperity. Focus on the word of God. Meditate on it day and night. Live with it in your place of work. Let the word of God guide you. In your daily living, let the word of God guide you. Your popular scripture. It's as we behold ourselves like in a mirror. Like in a mirror. Become a replicate of this world. Get to the level where that you see yourself. You just see the word of God in you. Some writer wrote, 
Let the world see Jesus in my eyes. Show them love they can't deny. Let the world see Jesus in my eyes. Jesus in my eyes. Let them see Jesus in you. Let them see Jesus in you. Some of us, money control us. When the abundance of money has come, we become disrespectful. We don't know where that's a girl. We don't know anointing. We don't know anybody. We expect everyone to bow before us. Why? Because it's money, not prosperity. Jesus. And that is why you find out when they get to Europe, they begin to bear their stomach. After they have bear their stomach, they lost their destiny. They become uh, what they call no future ambition. What is the abbreviation that time? NFA. ambition. All they are concerned about they go out, they get the money they bear themselves, that they, they sleep they get up again, get the money go and bear their hands. They've lost it. But we should be focused on the Lord. Focus on the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God's plan and purpose for us is not just to make wealth but to prosper. According to the scriptures we have read, 3 John 1 verse 2, prosperity is in obedience to the word of God. If you must prosper, you must know God. If you must prosper, you must know God. If you must make words, it's not compulsory to know God. Just obey the laws of words. But if you want to prosper, you must know God. Daniel level 32, what did he say? He said, for they that know their God, they are the ones that we do exploit. They are the ones. They are the ones. You must know God if you want to prosper. Hallelujah. And meditate in the world and live with the world according to Joshua 1 verse 8. But making wealth is by sowing or giving. And that is why Luke 6.38 says, Give and it shall be given unto thee. Good measure, press down, shake it together. Shall it be given unto your bosom? Just give. You will make words, abundance of riches. So, so you kiss somebody, go net to the In fact, some some some, some people destiny don't they see their the sacrifice. They go make sacrifice. Money don't see inside their hand. <laughs> some go to the Yahoo plus, they don't see get money. Amen. Amen. Such a man don't know that God will help him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 1. Let's open to that place. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 1. Quickly, we are rounding up now. Are we there? What did it say? Say, cast the bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. In other words, begin to invest. You want money? Invest. Investors are rich men. It's better to invest than to keep your money in the bank. Because that your money in the bank, investors are using it. I'm telling you, if you want riches, this is how to get riches. Invest. People today that are that are labored richest men in the world, it's not the money they have in the bank, eh? It's their invest, investments. All those the assets that they have. If you weigh it, you know that ah, this man get money. Amen. Bank will carry your money, make somebody rich man. You go there now, you go there, work labor day and night. If you want to come, you come withdraw five euro. You withdraw ten euro. Another man, they carry your ten thousand. They use and do big things. They get profits. Invest. Scatter your, your bread upon many waters. Come after a while. This is where I started from. Bible days. Not be today, business matter starts. Scatter around. When you come back, you will see many money. I saw a be. But believers and unbelievers can mark up words when they know how to sow and invest.
Yet in prosperity, it's not just about sowing, but also obedience to God's word. Also obedience to God's word. That is why you find that big men in the house of God, if they have millions and trillions, it does not treat God. What treats God is if actually they belong to him. If actually they are his own. I told us on Wednesday, or oh, last week Sunday, I told us, I said, it is not about having money that makes you please God. All that makes God being pleased with you. If you like, put 100 million for this altar. God is not happy with you when you are not doing well. Do you want God to be pleased by you? Seek him first. Let God come first. Let him be number one in your life. Living with the word of God. Hallelujah. These are what makes you prosper. Let's stand on our feet. Hallelujah. You are here, blessing everyone.